Thank you, Dr. Chang. Hi, everyone. My name is Andrea. And as Dr. Chang said, I'm with Aki, Asian Americans for Community Involvement. Um, I just wanted to thank all of you for being here on the webinar. webinar. I wanted to thank Civic Leadership USA uh, and Jing Jing TV for having me here this morning to share a little bit more about our program. Um, and I look forward to learning from each of you at the end of this webinar uh, more about each of your programs. So just to start, um, Aki, Asian Americans for Community Involvement, we are a nonprofit health organization, um, but one of our programs that we run is our youth leadership program. And it's called Leaders for Education, Advocacy, and Democracy. And so our program has been around, at least within Aki, for um, seven or so years. And our program is a spring to summer leadership program that empowers students to become socially and culturally conscious leaders through several different components of our program. The first is our professional development and leadership trainings that we hold throughout the year. And then we also place our interns in a summer internship in government and elected official offices. We have our civic engagement training. We talk about voter education. We do a voter education or a um, registration drive. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a little bit. And then guidance and mentorship that they receive in each of their mentor offices. Um, I'll also mention that our program um, is run by myself. And then we also have um, a director who helps coordinate the program. So we do have full-time staff who program. So like I mentioned, our mission is really to build the pipeline of socially and culturally conscious leaders of API and, community, uh, API and communities of color. And so our program goals are first to really arm students with the skills and the knowledge and the real world experience in each of their offices to be able to make meaningful change at any level. We also want to empower our students to seek leadership roles, elected office, and public service careers. And then we also promote civic engagement and we want our students to really feel deeply connected to our community. And then we also provide a network of alumni and mentors to support our students. Um, even after they leave our program. So I'll share with you a little bit about our timeline and some of the components of our program. Um, as far as timeline goes, we're currently in the middle of our recruitment um, process right now. So our program um, recruitment starts in December and it goes through February. Actually, end of this year is when we'll be closing the application period. Um, and then we do an interview event in March. And for our interview event, we actually invite uh, many of the partner offices, also some alumni, also our staff, to come and help interview the students to decide who will be a really good fit for our program. And I'll talk a little bit more about that, too. Um, and then our trainings actually take place throughout the year. So they start in March. They're every couple of Saturdays for us. Um, and then they end in August. And these trainings really, since my mic keeps going in and out, prepares our students for um, their experience in the internship office. So the first couple of trainings are, you know, teaching our students about how to be in a professional environment, public speaking, resume building, things like that, so that once they're actually placed in the office, they feel prepared and they feel comfortable to be in that environment. Some other things that we have um, in our program, we do a state capital trip every year in June. We go up there and meet our representatives. We get to tour the capital, learn more about what it's like to be an elected official, so we take a, a bus trip up there. It's And then we also do a voter registration drive. Um, part of our requirements for our students is to register a minimum of 
25 voters. And it's not just you know, to register X number of people, but it's to really teach our students the importance of civic engagement um, and also to, to teach them how to actually physically help register somebody with the written form so that they can then go out in the community and help register people who want to um, participate. And then our sum summer internship happens in, um, in summer, June through August. And I don't think I mentioned this before, but majority of our students um, are juniors and seniors in high school. Sometimes we do end up having first year college students. Um, but we find that the summer internship timeframe uh, works best June to August because that's when they're on their summer break. And we require a minimum of 100 hours. They are absolutely encouraged to do more than that, um, but we place them in government offices throughout Santa Clara County. And then we do have a graduation and award ceremony. Um, that is where we get to invite our local elected officials, um, all of our partner offices, our friends and family, and then we also throughout the year have them work on a um, community impact project together where they identify an issue in the community and they work to tackle that problem. And so at our um, graduation, we also have each of them present on that project. On the right-hand side of the slides, I listed some sample training topics that we'll probably cover this year. They're definitely, um, there's a lot of them in there. We probably do eight or nine trainings throughout the year. Um, and this year's an exciting year um, just because of, you know, the, the elections happening and census coming up. So we kind of tailor our training topics to what's happening that year. So you'll see Government 101, we'll kind of talk about census, uh, and why that's important, voter registration, advocacy, we talk about race and identity, and then also we incorporate some other issues like social justice issues, we talk about immigration, um, and then of course the professional um, and office etiquette trainings, resume building, all of that as well. Um, I mentioned the community engagement project, that's something we have them work on together in small groups. And then one other thing that we have them do is we have them submit written reflections on each of the trainings afterwards, just to get a sense from them, like what is it that they learned, what is it that they absorbed, what did they enjoy, what did they maybe not enjoy, so we can really use that feedback to tailor um, the program for future years as well. So for internship placements, um, I mentioned that we try to focus on the government offices and our elected officials' offices. So on the right-hand side, those are some of the offices we've sec secured this year. Um, you'll see some state representatives, our county office, and our city office. Um, because we're, we have a, a good number of high school students, that does kind of change the type of um, placements that we have. Um, I will say that if you have a um, majority of college students, you'll have a much better chance um, getting federal level internships. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is we've found that the most effective way to you know, get in touch with our elected officials offices and our um, government agencies is to really focus on connecting with their key staff. And so over the years, we've been able to build those relationships. Um, so you know, it's, it's not as hard as it used to be to try to um, secure those internship office placements, um, but we do, run into challenges every year to make sure we have enough placements for everyone. So a lot of what that looks like is, um, you know, reaching out to their key staff. I might go have coffee with someone to kind of share about our program. I put on here perks of being a mentor office. And what I mean by that is, um, you know, it can be kind of hard to convince a, an elected office to take one of your interns if they, you know, they're not really aware of 
of what you're offering them. Um, and what I mean by that is like framing is really important for us. So the way we do that is we want to let those offices know like, hey, we're, we're really training these students um, in all of these different topics so that they'll be prepared to be an intern in your office. So kind of framing it in that way is like you're gonna get a, a trained student who knows what they're doing, who's passionate about service, um, and that really helps them um, you know, feel more comfortable taking on an intern, especially if this is their first time working with you. Um, what else? And then I put regular check-ins with mentor and student. We do check-ins throughout the year. We'll have a, a joint meeting with our student and our mentor office, and then I'll also meet one-on-one -on -one with our mentor office just to check in and make sure everything's going well. And we find that when you, you know, pay special attention to those things, especially when it's their very first year working with you, um, they're much more likely to come back the next year and be a partner office then. As far as student recruitment goes, um, I know some of the, the questions that you all submitted had to do with, you know, how do you know what types of students to bring into your program or what type of qualities do you look for? And for me, um, you know, there's a lot of different things that we look for, but interest in public service is, of course, one of them, but also like capacity to grow and, and um, you know, being open to to learning. I know, I feel like my mic is going in and out. Um, we get a lot of students, I would say, who are way, way, way overcommitted and and don't, you know, seem like they they might not even have time for our program, versus somebody who seems very passionate and, you know, very excited for this opportunity, have more time to dedicate the things that we consider when we're accepting um, students into our program. For outreach for our students, uh, because a lot of our students are high schoolers, um, that could mean contacting folks at the school districts, um, you know, government teachers at different high schools. For our city of San Jose, Council members, our elected officials in our city, I know that all of them have um, constituent e-newsletters, and so it's really easy for me to, you know, send an email to all of their staff, and then they're able to share the information to all of their constituent newsletters. To be really helpful, um, I said local high school and college boards, administrations and faculty, um, and then, of course, classroom presentations. I've done lots of those to try and, and share directly with students about our program. Some other highlights uh, of our program and things that we found are to, found to be pretty successful is the first one is our voter registration drive and competition. So I mentioned before, require students to register a minimum of 25 voters, but we make a friendly competition out of it. And um, at the end of their program during graduation, we offer um, prizes and awards to the students who were able to register the most number of voters. And so they, you know, they have a lot of fun with that uh, competition. The other thing that we're considering doing this year because census is coming up is a census pledge card drive. So it's kind of similar to voter registration, but you know, getting pledges from community members um, on, you know, making sure that they're going to complete the census in April. I mentioned our community impact project already. Um, and then tours, for example, we try and, you know, do some fun outings and tours. Sacramento is one of them. Um, NBC Bay Area, we have a tour there, which is really fun for them. So kind of just trying to be creative and, and um, incorporate different components to our program as much as possible. So I think this might be my last slide coming up. Um, opportunities for growth. So I, I mentioned a lot of our students are high schoolers. I think that, you know, in future years, we hope to really expand 
uh, focus on recruiting more college students. We also, of course, every goal for every year is to continue to expand the student and internship office poll, and really that um, relies on relationship building and cultivation, so that, of course, takes time, but that's something we hope to do every single year. We currently offer scholarships for our low-income students, so we'll either, um, we'll either like waive the fee for them that uh, whatever it costs for them to be in the program, and what we try to do, depending on what funding we have, this year, um, we try to give them some stipends at the end of the program for completing the program fully. And then what I envision eventually, hopefully maybe this year or next year, is doing some type of um, alumni mixer or a gala to really uh, bring everyone together from past years. And that's something we haven't done before, but something we're looking uh, to do in the future. So that's all I have for my slides. Um, thank you very much for listening, and um, I look forward to the discussion later on.